I'm back with another tutorial and this time I'm going to show you exactly how I create hand-drawn florals that look super realistic like they've been drawn with a fine liner which is my sig signature look um, that I always go to when drawing florals. I'm going to show you how I achieve that same look but using Procreate so um, digitally but making it look like it's hand drawn. I get asked the question a lot, um, what's my technique with drawn on Procreate um, when drawn ink style florals? So I'm going to show you exactly how today. It's so warm at the minute. <laughs> I'm getting the mood of um, creating like some summer illustrations and florals in general. Um, so I thought this would be a good one to look at. It's kind of like a plumeria type flower. Um, so I got to procreate over here and keep this one over here so we have it as a little reference drawn like so and I'm just going to show you step by step how I draw this okay so first off we're going to select our brush and this one's my favorite when drawn um, ink florals it's the ink feed brush and I have it on a bit of a streamline, um, not fully, um, but a bit on there, just to make it a bit smoother, like you're drawn with a fine liner. And everything else is um, non, right at the bottom there. So just give it a little test out here, if you like first, to um, make sure you're happy with it, and of course tweak it if you like, but you can see it's got a nice bit of um, bleed on it, um, just to give it that more natural line. And obviously the smaller the brush, the less that um, distinctive that is but it's all in those tiny little deals that make it look like it's hand drawn. So test it on your canvas. Uh, this is an A4 landscape canvas at the minute. Um, I think that looks like a good size. So I have it at 100% opacity and the size is at 3%. And we're just gonna get drawn now. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in a bit to start in the center of the flower. Um, as it's the smallest part and I like to be able to see what I'm doing properly and I'm going to start by concentrating on this centre part here with the top petal coming off from that centre area. So I'm going to start from the centre point and I'm going to draw that first curved, this part here, this first curved lip all the way up like so and I'm going to bring that back down to the bottom. Okay. So that's the first area we want to start with. I'm going to start creating the top of the petal. So I'm going to point it up, wave it a bit and start to bring it back down but not go all the way because as you can see there's a petal here overlapping. So our next step would be to go in and draw that petal before we finish off the first one. So back to the centre, I'm going to create a little curve down at the bottom here which is this one here and I'm gonna swoop that all the way over that one doesn't go all the way to the end and I'm gonna round it off and close it up at the top like so with a little point a bit too far there it's a good thing about drawing on Procreate you can always undo if you're not happy with how it's going have you ever done that in real life though? You sometimes forget you're not drawn digitally and try and like press um, undo on your sketchbook. I've done that a few times. <laughs> um, okay, so now we have that second part. We're gonna go in and start to connect it up like so. So connect this one back down. And I like to add in a few lines at this point just to show where the petals fold and flow like so from the bottom. So I'm just gonna add in a few quick lines and the quicker and smoother these lines are, the better as they'll kind of taper off towards the end instead of um, being a bit more of a chunky line. Okay, so now we've got that petal finished. We can go in and finish off this petal. As you can see, it doesn't overlap anything. So we're gonna go back to the center here and create a little a little kind of round area like so for the next petal to flow from and I'm gonna bring that straight down with a little bit of a straight edge and then we're gonna curve that all the way back up 
to this point here and from this little lip I'm going to draw a little line back down and if you're working from a reference drawn like me don't concentrate too much on making it look exactly like the reference drawn I never make them look exactly the same um, I like to give it my own twist and I just kind of use it to get a general idea of the shape and the way the flower flows and then I kind of just um, put my own spin on it because that's the good thing about flowers there's no two are the same they're all super organic and um, super unique so you don't have to be exact <laughs> okay now we've gone in with this bottom petal here we're going back to the center and we're going to start to bring the side lip of this one out like so and then just close it off at the end okay now we have the basis of that one we can start to create the end of this petal it's got a bit of a point on it curve it back down towards that bottom bit but this one overlaps so we're going to start to draw that one in first I'm going to go back to the centre create another lip that's flowing up this way and connect that back in like so and close that one off and then now we've got that in place we can close that petal off Maybe next to it. Australia. Add in any little lines like so, just to add a bit of flow to the petal. So obviously you don't have to do this duplicating um, new layer step. I just kind of do that for reference. Um, it especially helps when I'm creating my books as well to know the steps that I actually took um, when drawing these flowers so that I can put a tutorial together that you can actually work from and view in my books <laughs> so we're gonna before we finish this one off we're gonna go in with this petal here as you can see that one also overlaps so coming from the center curve it around that one's actually cut off in the image so we're just winging it <laughs> follow the same kind of flow see if the rest of the petals close off that lip and then before moving on again we're just gonna close off this one and this one looks like it could have a bit of a deeper curve like so just add a little line from the top as well and now we can go in finish off our last petal. I'm going to start that on again, just kind of point it up at the top and then close it off like so. Add our little lines. This really just kind of helps shape and guide the flow of each petal. Okay, now we have the basis of a flower but I kind of want to add some leaves as that's a big part of the flower. I feel like this areas could do with a leaf um, just to add a bit more interest. So I'm just going to go in and create the bottom. Let's kind of use this one as a basis. So I'm going to kind of create the stem of the leaf from the center of the flower like so. And then kind of wave that line a little bit and then go up, close it back to the center there. Do them this way. It adds a bit more shape to it and it looks more like it's the underleaf and um, that's folded in half instead. So we have that leaf and let's add another little one down here so forward face and leaf this time. right there, wave the line a little bit and then close it off like so. And then we're going to add some lines facing towards the stem from the edge of the leaf and then some veins coming off 
looks like so and that's the general shape of the flower there and we're gonna go in and start adding some shading now so let's start by shading the actual petals and I keep the same size brush um, and everything throughout um, so this is no different I just go in very lightly um, this is the Apple Pencil too, so it is really good at um, picking up the sensitivity to the pressure that you're applying. I know the first one just as well as I had that one before this one. This one's a little bit better, but the other one works just the same. But if it, it's not as responsive, just go ahead and turn the size down maybe just by 1 or 2%, I'd say. Should do the trick. And I just kind of concentrate on any areas where the fold has dipped in a little bit and add some shading coming out from there and concentrating on the bottom where the flower is meeting in the middle. I'm gonna add some more lines here and then just drag any down a little bit just to add some more interest to the centre of the petal. And then on these edge lips, because they are highlighted um, as they're the most forward facing part of the flower, we just want to add in a little bit on the edge, often too much. Just a tiny little bit. And we're going to go the same. all the way around, just quick fast strokes so that they taper off and they're not too um, flat and chunky and try and keep them following the same curve as the flower. I'm going to go down from these areas as well and again just adding in some interest to the centre of the petal. Don't forget to add a few at the top but you kind of want most of the shading to be at the bottom here. And if you don't want the lines to look too bitty in any areas that are darkly shaded, just go ahead and um, block in the colour there. I'm gonna add a little bit on this edge. Like so. And that's about it for that one. Let's move on to the next one. That's our lip there, so we don't want to add too much there. We're gonna add some more underneath as this one is pretty buried underneath those other petals there so we're gonna make it a bit darker underneath add a few in the top maybe a little bit coming from there let's really block it in there and again just add a few quick little lines on that center fold there let me twist this a bit <laughs> okay so this one is a bit more forward facing, so we're going to concentrate on that centre area there. And then these bits will just give a few little bits of shading. And again, just add in some more lines if the um, style of the flower allows for that. Just to add some interest. Oops, it's a low battery. <laughs> Bit hurry up there. <laughs> okay, some on the side there. And last petal. I'm just gonna block this area in. And then use my fast shader lines to blend it out. Again, some from the top. from underneath that lip like so okay now's a good time to just have a little scan around those petals and see if there's any areas you want to add anything anything that's looking a bit out of place and then once you're happy with the petals we can go in do the same for the leaf and my general guide for leaves is to 
concentrate on shading out from that centre vein and then up um, these bits a little bit all the way up So just following the curve of the leaf, never use a straight line, always try and use a curved line. Don't want it to end up looking flat. And then I'll just go in from the sides and pick out some areas to just extend into. And then add any little bits that be extended from there. And I'm just going to add in a little bit of shading on the centre vein as it's come from underneath a tiny bit off the side just to blend it in a bit. Like so. And the same thing with this one. Just concentrating on those veins coming out from the centre first. Adding in a couple between just to make it like a bit more full and then once you've done those just bring in a few from the top maybe you're in Australia I'm gonna add in maybe even on the coast a little bit disguised in on that edge there just kind of blend it back in with that line there. A bit of cross hatching. Cool. Just stick a little bit up here just to finish it off. Curve it down like so. And yeah, that's my general guide to drawing a realistic floral digitally. That looks like it's been drawn by hand. Uh, I'm gonna go into the centre there, just really shade in that area. But yeah, like you can see, it's got a it's got a good um, organic look to it. Um, that brush it works really well, and I'd use that exact same technique to um, draw on if I was going to do it in a sketchbook with a fine liner as well. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, I'd love to see your versions if you give it a go as well. Um, this flower is a really nice um, quick one to draw, which I thought would be good for this one. Um, but yeah, show me your results here on YouTube. Point me in the direction. I love to give feedback. I love to see it. Um, and yeah, tag me on Instagram at Felicity and Inc as well. And I'll be back again soon with some more tutorials. I hope you have a great week. Thanks for watching. Bye.